What's the deal, everybody? Welcome back to the studio. Jeremy Deal here, and today we're doing a camera comparison. For those who have been watching over the past month and a half, you know I got the Sony a7 IV, and I used to do all of my real estate video on the Panasonic GH5S. Now, over this past month, I've been using the a7 IV and the GH5S out in the field so I can really get a feel and contrast and comparison of these two cameras so I can give you an educated, real-life, real-world use example of how these two stack up for real estate video in particular. So if you're here for some other tutorial, whether it be real estate photos or video of other sorts, keep in mind this tutorial, I am just gonna be tackling these two cameras for real estate video. Let's get into it. All right, getting right into it. First thing I'll say is the clips that I showed you at the beginning of this video, those were all shot with the a7 IV. And just to keep everything fair and even, I was shooting everything on the a7 IV in 1080 10 bit and also everything on the GH5S in 1080 10 bit a little bit more on that topic matter later on but let's get right into the main differences you may want to know about these two cameras the reason i shot it in hd mode is because both of these cameras are kind of lacking in different places first you've got the gh5s that has 4k 60 but only in 8-bit next you have the a7 IV that has 4k 60 but it has a crop so that crop really makes it unusable for real estate videos and the 8-bit 4k 60 on the gh5 breaks down in color grading so both of them actually shine on the 1080 60 mode whoa 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 special announcement here if you can't tell from the lights behind me they're different colors now before we jump in too much let me just say that this footage is all taken with the 12 to 24 for g master it works great for photos but what i have noticed is that whenever you have to put it down to f4 it seems to be very soft on a lot of these interiors you may have noticed that from those initial interior clips that i showed and you'll notice it on a lot of the clips going out i do have the 12 mil loa nd 2.8 and I did play around with it a little at my house, but when I made this video, I didn't have any time to use it in the field. So this video is really not covering that lens. It does fix a lot of the sharpness issues you see in this. And that's why I talk about the sharpness, but the one thing it doesn't fix is the grain issues, which I talk about later. So just keep all of that in mind. I have not yet tested the LOA 9mm APS-C lens. If anyone has one out there that they're willing to let me use for a week so I can test it out, or if someone's trying to get rid of one for cheap, just hit me up because I am looking for one. They are very difficult to find for rental. That being said, let's get right back into it. Next, we have the GH5S that, as I just mentioned, does have 4K60 in full frame mode or micro four thirds mode, since that's what it shoots in. But that being said, it does not have 10 bit in 4K60, it's only 8 bit. And I have noticed over time that I would much prefer a lower quality of film grade compared to a higher bit ratio because the final product will always look better, believe it or not. Just something I've kind of noticed over time. That being said, the GH5 does have 10 bit in 1080 60. So both of these cameras, we're gonna be using these features alone. Now, the first thing I'll say, the a7 IV, as you've seen everywhere else, it does have that oversized 7K sensor down sample to a 4K. So it is very sharp. This camera does some things really well. And if you watch everyone else's reviews on this camera, they will show you a stagnant room shot, increasing the ISO, showing you that it is pretty much grain free. From my experience, this does not seem to be the case. This camera does shine extremely well in bright areas. If you have a bright house with huge windows, the a7 IV is top notch. Not only does it have a larger dynamic range than the GH5S, but it also has a much better highlight recovery over the GH5S. Whenever I overexpose a room, 
by 1.7 stops is roughly what I always do on the A74 because that's what I was told. So that's what I roll with. So whenever I do that exposure method, you can really bring down those highlights and see straight through those windows with no problems. The GH5S, not so much. Whenever you're doing that overexposure method, it can be much more difficult to pull back those highlights. Another thing I like about the Sony a7 IV is whenever you put on your zebra modes, it allows you to top out at 95% or 98%, something like that. The GH5S only goes to 80%, which I consider a downfall. I really wish it went to 95% because that's where I personally like my zebra set at. So that way I know exactly when things are blown out instead of roughly 20% before things are blown out. Either way, I digress, that's just me going in. So like I said, when it comes to these bright rooms, this A7 IV is magnificent. It creates a beautiful picture. But I have noticed in these dark rooms, maybe it's just because of the lens I'm using. I'm shooting with the 12 to 24 F4, but I also noticed the same problem when I was shooting on my Loa 12 mil ND, which is a 2.8 for the Sony system, is that these dark rooms, I'm actually getting a lot of grain in the corner. The low life rendition with this camera, it seems creates a lot of fine noise in the dark corners, something that the GH5S does not do. I don't know if it's because of the actual sensor difference since the GH5S was designed specifically for video, the grain it has is much larger and much more appealing to the eyes. The a7 IV has that hybrid built into it. So it's got the 33 megapixel sensor and usually the grain for that is a lot smaller and more annoying or displeasing in the eyes. I don't really know how you wanna say that, but it's just something that I've noticed between the two. Another thing is the a7 IV is much larger, even with the polarizer on both systems, because I use the wonder panel, whether it be on the 12 to 24 with the Sony or the seven to 14 on the GH5S. Either way, it has a large polarizer system, but the a7 IV is a much heavier and bulkier camera. That being said, it's a little bit more difficult to get right on the gimbal when adjusting all axes. If you're adjusting your gimbal, make sure you do all four. I used to be really lazy and just do the front to back and side to side. I would never do the tilt up and I would never tilt it forward to check that sideways rotation. So I got a lot of micro jitters because of that. So just don't be lazy whenever you're doing your gimbal stuff. Taking that extra step really pays off and that's just an extra tip for you. So right after that, let's go back over to the GH5S and we're gonna talk about how it compares in those things that I just brought up. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the noise since we were just talking about that. The GH5S seems to perform tremendously well in low light situations, especially in dark rooms. That's where it shines. And I really do believe it has an advantage over the a7 IV. The a7 IV is not as completely grain free as other influencers out there may want you to believe. So another thing to think about is the price difference. The a7 IV with the full frame lens is like three times the price of the older GH5S with a Panasonic or a micro four thirds lens of equivalent. Like I said, I use the Olympus seven to 14. I just find it to be super, super sharp. Since it's a 2.8, it lets me shoot down in 3.2. Everything's still in focus, everything's super bright. And that's why I like that system. So let's go on to the next thing that I talked about with the a7 IV was actually the first thing I talked about there. And we're going to talk about the highlight recovery. Now, one thing where the a7 IV definitely outshines the GH5S is in its highlight recovery and its dynamic range in a room. So as I mentioned before, if you have a big living room with huge windows that let in a ton of natural light, the a7 IV is going to outperform the GH5 s here both in sharpness in color rendition and once again the dynamic range i think you can really notice those two and a half stops in situations like this so here the gh5 kind of falls off and in my opinion the a7 IV really excels so which one of these cameras should you buy 
if you are just starting your real estate video career or should you switch to one or the other if you already have one and the answer i'm going to give you is if you already have one just stick with what you got because there's no reason to change over these cameras are so comparable now i must admit I've been tending to lean towards the a7 IV a little more for video in my nice houses. And I still bring my GH5S for my regular houses because as I mentioned, these smaller houses tend to be a lot darker and the GH5S really outperforms the a7S there. Or blah, 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 blah. So whenever it comes to these smaller houses that are traditionally darker spaces, maybe places with galley kitchens, a three bedroom, two bath, no large windows, I will actually reach for the GH5S over the A7 IV because it is better in these smaller houses and these darker rooms simply because of that grain situation I was talking about earlier. Whenever you start bringing up your noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve, I think you can really see it in the output overall product. So having something that can handle that low light a little better is nice. Now, whenever I'm doing nice, expensive houses with big rooms, something that's 4,000 square foot and above, typically those rooms are very bright and luxurious, and I'll roll with the A7 IV because it just captures those rooms much better. But there is one other big difference to keep in mind when you're thinking about these two cameras, and that is the full frame versus Micro Four Thirds. I've mentioned it so many times in videos before this, the Micro Four Thirds will allow you to crank that aperture down but still get more in focus so with the micro four thirds i usually shoot everything around 3.2 but with the a7 IV, i have to shoot at f4 to f5 just to keep the entire room sharp and in focus for these larger houses as i did mention earlier i do also have that 12 mil nd from loa but the issue i have there is that if i'm cranking it down to 3.2 on a full frame the entire room is not in focus i know with wide angle you do get much more depth in there with those lower apertures but it's just something that i've noticed i've gotten back home and even though i thought it was tack sharp on the a7 IV, it really was not which actually caused me to start using the focus mapping feature on the back of the a7 IV, which is a new feature built in and I love it. I've stopped using peaking and starting using the focus mapping. It is kind of weird to see the difference because it uses color tones to show planes in focus, but it is also much more effective at sharply pulling focus, especially when not using autofocus on something like that Loa 12 mil that I mentioned earlier. That's it. There's one thing I want to mention before I roll out, and that is this new lens that I'm using on my a7 IV. I've been in the market for a new kind of video lens for doing wedding videos, and I got this incredible deal from someplace I had never heard before. Now, this is not like a sponsored plug or anything like that. This is me buying a lens with my very own money from another company and so satisfied by the experience, I thought I should tell you about it. So I recently found this online site, MBP, and that's where I found this lens. I was looking for a 24 to 70 for doing my video gimbal work and this Zeiss lens, typically is very expensive, especially new. So I was looking for a used version. Everywhere I was looking, I found it for somewhere between seven to 800 bucks used. And then out of nowhere, this site pops up, MBP, and this lens comes up at 358. And it says there's some light damage on the exterior. I was a little worried about that because, you know, buying used lenses, there's kind of something you want to have in your hand to check it out. But at that price, I was like, Something has to be wrong with it. Let's just hope it works. I'm going to order it and check it out. It got to me and it is pristine. It is crystal clean. The only places that show any sign of damage are where the gear rings went on the focus rings. So the front optics are crystal clear, back optics crystal clear, no dust, no dirt, no scratches, no nothing. So for a dirt cheap price, I got this new lens to start filming videos with. So thank you MBP for that. Anyone go check it out. Like I said, this isn't sponsored. I was just thoroughly surprised by uh, how well this lens was for the price they were selling to that. That being said, like and subscribe, all that jazz.
Keep on rocking and rolling. Enjoy what you're doing. Make smart business decisions. Let me know which camera you prefer, which one you like down there. Yeah, let me know which one you're using. Catch you next time.